like 5000 likes to this video, we will implode more patriotic news. Thank you. Trump becomes bounty hunter overnight and issues direct threat to hundreds. We will find you. President Trump spoke to a large group of police officers at Suffolk Community College on Friday. His comments during the speech made headlines when he discussed illegal immigration as well as police use of force. Before the group of officers, he made the following comments, I have a simple message for every gang member and criminal alien that are threatening so violently our people, we will find you. We will arrest you. We will jail you. And we will deport you. Illegal immigration reform has been an important component of his administration's policy work and the president reiterated this during his speech where he denounced transnational gang crime associated to MS-13. He specifically targeted the immigration policies in Long Island that led to several high-profile murders. A total of 17 people were murdered on the island due to the crimes of MS-13 gang members. In reference to MS-13 members, the president called them animals and noted they have, transformed peaceful parks and beautiful, quiet neighborhoods into blood-stained killing fields. You say what happened to the old days where people came into this country, they worked and they worked and they worked and they had families and they paid taxes and they did all sorts of things, and their families got stronger and they were closely knit. Failure to enforce our immigration laws had predictable results. Drugs, gangs and violence. President Trump promised that individuals' rights to keep and bear arms were safe and not at threat and furthermore that he would use monetary and fiscal policy to ensure that foreign countries took back the illegal aliens that criminally and unlawfully entered our country. He is already fulfilling this promise he made. Over the last six weeks, officers with the Immigration and Customs Enforcement have been working with their partners to arrest approximately 1,400 illegal criminal aliens. Moreover, they have seized 200 firearms from criminal illegal aliens as well as about 600 pounds of various illegal drugs. Because of the crackdown on illegal immigration the president has noted he will be hiring 10,000 more ICE agents to aid in this fight. Which in itself will be a jobs creator for our country. As well as placing more immigration judges in positions of power. The president has insisted that his work to combat illegal immigration is the largest crackdown our country has ever seen. President Trump said, When you see these thugs being thrown into the back of a paddy wagon, you just see them thrown in, rough, I said, please don't be too nice. Like when you guys put somebody in the car and you're protecting their head, you know, the way you put their hand over. Like, don't hit their head and they've just killed somebody. Don't hit their head. I said you can take the hand away, okay? Thanks to the president's work illegal immigrant deportation has consistently decreased since his inauguration. Approximately 13,914 arrests have taken place in just June. This does not take into consideration all the other months since he was sworn into office. During President Obama's presidency, that number was closer to 9,134 on a monthly basis. As a result of this latest crackdown though, 610,000 cases have been backlogged creating additional work for the agency and their employees. The extra burden to immigration courts has created another backlog of deportation. Because there are so many cases to take care of. USA Today reported, Attorney General Jeff Sessions has dispatched 25 more immigration judges to detention centers along the southwest border with Mexico and wants to add more. The Justice Department's goal is to hire 50 immigration judges this year and 75 in the following year. The American Mirror reported the following, Trump also discussed his promised border wall with Mexico to stem illegal immigration, human trafficking, and drug smuggling. Trump said $1.6 billion has already been approved for Phase 1. We're going to secure our border against illegal entry and we will build the wall, Trump said describing the project as a vital tool for ending the humanitarian crisis. The president closed his remarks with gratitude for the law enforcement officers working to keep Americans safe. We will defend our country, protect our communities and put the safety of the American people first. It's called America first. It's called make America great again. Have you heard that expression? You are really special, special Americans and thank you in particular to the great police, sheriffs, 
and ICE officers, he said. You do a spectacular job, the country loves you and the country respects you. Ever since he won the election there has been a new sheriff in town and that sheriff is President Trump and he is kicking out everyone who is a criminal who came here legally. Our streets will be safer our neighborhoods will be better and people will be able to sleep at night. All thanks to President Trump and the work of the Attorney General's office as well as the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency and their employees. Democrat freaks out after Trump threatens to take away Congress's special Obamacare carve-out. The repeal and replace health care bill has been a hot-button issue for some time now. Especially since the Senate was unable to pass it after voting on it just last week. The media has been wildly reporting on the late-night votes. However, it was the president's reaction and not the public's that was more surprising after the legislation failed to pass through the Senate. The president made it clear that he has done everything in his power to try and ensure that the bill passed and thus worked closely with members of the Senate and House of Representatives to try and get the result he wanted. So he wasn't exactly pleased when three Republican senators' no votes led to the dismantling of the piece of legislation that will give his administration a huge win. He has argued that instead of repealing and replacing the bill that the Senate should simply repeal without replacing. As well. He has even argued that we should simply let the Affordable Care Act explode and then deal with the fallout. On Saturday he sent out a series of tweets where he appears to threaten members of the House and Senate in relation to their actions concerning the health care debacle. The Independent Journal Review reported the following on the president. President Donald Trump on Saturday threatened to end bailouts for members of Congress and insurance companies if lawmakers don't pass a new health care bill in the near future. If a new health care bill is not approved quickly, bailouts for insurance companies and bailouts for members of Congress will end very soon, Trump tweeted. Senator Chris Murphy, D. Court, said Trump's warning is a clear threat to take away health care from members of Congress and their staff. Murphy then asserted that the president does have the power to cut off health care for leg branch employees and crater exchanges. He then added, I would argue this is a very serious moment. President Donald Trump on Saturday threatened to end bailouts for members of Congress and insurance companies if lawmakers don't pass a new health care bill in the near future. If a new health care bill is not approved quickly, bailouts for insurance companies and bailouts for members of Congress will end very soon, Trump tweeted. Senator Chris Murphy, D. Court, said Trump's warning is a clear threat to take away health care from members of Congress and their staff. Murphy then asserted that the president does have the power to cut off health care for leg branch employees and crater exchanges. He then added, I would argue this is a very serious moment. While his supporters have always loved his blunt antics and willingness to do what they call shooting from the hip, this latest set of tweets might have crossed the line. But one Fox News reporter read Henry confirmed that fact when he said the president's tweets were simply pointing out the hypocrisy on Capitol Hill. IJR reported the following on what Henry said, Henry explained that members of Congress made a special rule for themselves to enter the small business exchange rather than following the rules that had been imposed on the rest of America. This helped pay for insurance for members of Congress and their staff benefits. What they were saying is, we want a little special carve-out, Henry said. Now, will the president be able to do away with that? Who knows? Maybe it's just rhetoric. But he is pointing out that these lawmakers, who didn't have the courage of their convictions, he's saying, maybe I am going to expose your special deal. Henry argued that Trump's message resonates with a lot of Americans. Here are some of the tweets that were exchanged. CNBC also reported an interesting development, President Donald Trump threatened on Saturday to end government payments to health insurers if Congress does not pass a new health care bill and goaded them to not abandon their seven-year quest to replace the Obamacare law. In a Twitter message on Saturday, Trump said, if a new health care bill is not approved quickly, bailouts for insurance companies and bailouts for members of Congress will end very soon. The tweet came a day after Senate Republicans failed to muster enough votes to repeal parts of the Affordable Care Act, President Barack Obama's signature health care bill commonly known as Obamacare. 
The first part of Trump's tweet appeared to be referring to the approximately $8 billion in cost-sharing reduction subsidies the federal government pays to insurers to lower the price of health coverage for low-income Americans. The second part appeared to be a threat to end the employer contribution for Congress members and their staffs, who were moved from the normal federal employee health care benefits program onto the Obamacare insurance exchanges as part of the 2010 health care law. Trump has previously threatened to suspend the payments to insurers, which are determined by the Department of Health and Human Services. In April, he threatened to end the payments if Democrats refused to negotiate over the health care bill. In all likelihood, the Senate will now move on to another major issue the administration hopes to deal with such as tax reform, infrastructure, immigration reform and more. Perhaps now it is time to take a break from health care and come back to it. Their feature certainly depends upon Breaking riots about to erupt and as after what Obama's disturbed admin just did to Sheriff Joe. Arizona's unapologetic Sixtrom Sheriff, Joe Arpaio, was voted out of office in 2016 after taking a stand against President Barack Obama at the time. Among his many anti-criminal, pro-American ways, his no-excuses approach to tackling the prolific illegal immigration problem in his state landed him liberal crosshairs. Even since he was removed, the left has been out to get him and haven't stopped since Barack Obama has been out of office. America's toughest sheriff did what he wanted that he believed was in the best interest of the nation, by trying to reduce the influx of illegals and the crime they spread. Standing up for this made him a target and now Obama's former administration finally got what they wanted. The people in Maricopa County who respect all that Arpaio did for him could riot since justice was not served to this man who served and protected them. Arpaio had been fighting a federal trial for years that had been brought against him for refusing to stop his so-called crime suppression sweeps which rounded up people suspected of being in the U.S. illegally. Although a judge ordered Arpaio to stop the traffic patrols that targeted immigrants, the self-styled America's toughest sheriff did not, as family reported. Arpaio continued to run those operations for nearly 18 months after that order. Judge Murray Snow found the 85-year-old and three of his top hates in civil contempt last May. Now, at the culmination of those charges, he's just learned his fate. Many are hoping that President Donald Trump can fix it, considering they share many of the same views on assertive action against immigration. As Family reports, U.S. District Judge Susan Bolton on Monday found former Maricopa County Sheriff Joe Arpaio guilty of criminal contempt of court the culmination of a federal trial that was years in the making. The six-term sheriff, who was voted out of office in November 2016, is known for, among other things, cracking down on illegal immigration and using controversial crime suppression sweeps to round up those suspected of being in the U.S. illegally. Those operations, which went on for years, are what landed him in court. Although a judge ordered Arpaio to stop the traffic patrols that targeted immigrants, the self-styled America's toughest sheriff did not. Arpaio continued to run those operations for nearly 18 months after that order. Last May, Judge Murray Snow found Arpaio, now 85, and three of his top aides in civil contempt. In a strongly worded 162-page document, Snow wrote that Arpaio's office violated court orders intended to end racial profiling practices by his department. They have demonstrated a persistent disregard for the orders of this court, as well as an intention to violate and manipulate the laws and policies regulating their conduct, Snow said. Although Arpaio had entered a not guilty plea in the criminal contempt of court case, he later admitted to civil contempt and has always insisted that he never intentionally violated the court original order. It's uncertain whether Trump can pardon this decision or not. This sheriff was found guilty and is being called a traitor by the left for actions he took on behalf of the American people and the sovereignty of our country. Yet Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama still go free without a single charge against them for all of the traitorous things they have done. Originally scheduled for April, Arpaio's criminal contempt trial began on June 26. He had asked for a jury trial, 
saying that an elected official's actions should be decided by an impartial jury of his peers, not a judge. U.S. District Judge Susan Bolton rejected the argument and denied that request. RPEO's team appealed the decision, but the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals upheld Bolton's ruling, according to his family. Four days into the trial, RPEO's lawyers filed a motion seeking an acquittal, saying the statute of limitation had passed. The left is celebrating this as a victory against tyranny while completely ignoring all the real acts of treason their favorite politicians have committed. The main difference is that Joe was trying to stop the illegal immigration and liberals have only tried to arm, aid, and abet them. While we don't condone anyone refusing to follow a judge's orders, if justice was really served in this case, then Democrats would be held accountable for their actions as well. What Sheriff Joe did resulted in numerous illegals being sent back to where they came from and potentially saved countless citizens from harm. Liberal politician tyranny results in countless American lives being lost. The left apparently puts more value on illegals' lives than their fellow citizens.